Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Tom, for that beautiful piece. Get us in a meditative mood. Um, I welcome everyone here and everyone at home to this service at the First Congregational Church, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. For those of you who I haven't met yet, my name is Janine Keedy, and I'm a member of the worship team here at FCC. Whether you are here in person or are viewing from home and wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. Though we, may, though we may worship in separate places, we are joined together as one in the body of Christ. We give a shout out of thanks to Natick's Public Access Channel Pegasus and to those of us who helped to bring you this service this morning at Hank and Gail up there manning the equipment. Um, just as a reminder, it's the first Sunday of the month, so it is Communion Sunday. So I invite you, those of you at home, to prepare something for Communion, in addition to having a candle handy to light when we get to those parts of this service. Uh, prayer requests may uh, be sent to prayers at firstchurchnatic.org and somebody will get them and forward to them to us later in the service. Do we have any announcements this morning? The playground prayer ground. The playground, yep. Uh, children are welcome to come to the stage area to play. There are some toys, there are things to do, coloring, books to read, if um, anyone's here who'd like to do that. Okay, and we are blessed to welcome the Reverend Dave Van Arsdale to our pulpit this morning. David retired in 2013 after 41 years in ministry, which started with ordination in Edwards UCC in Framingham and concluded as the pastor of Faith Presbyterian Church in Sun City, Arizona. Dave and his wife, or Ellen, hi Ellen. Uh, have become part of the South Church UCC in Andover since moving six years ago from Arizona to the Edgewood Retirement Community in North Andover. Dave is now serving as the chair of the Council on Aging for North Andover. Welcome, Dave. We're happy to have you here this morning. Okay. Um, I guess next up is just, uh, you may have received, you should have received, uh, a letter from the church this week with a card asking for update contact information. You know, you can move your chair <laughs> so much you need. Okay, feel free to, so you can see. Um, updated contact information, and there's a very short survey on it. It looks like this. I don't know. We've all gotten it this week. Okay, this is mine. So please help us to update our phone and email list as well as understand what your relationship is with the church at this point. Um, there's room to include comments on the back side, what I'll call the back side. Please feel free to add any additional information that you think would be helpful for us to have. And please take the time to fill out this card and return it to the church by September the 11th. Okay. Um, and just so everyone is aware, we have transition worship leaders coming up for the next five or six weeks. So please join us for worship in the coming weeks. Next week we will have the West Virginia Work Campers uh, share their experience of having gone there and on their mission back in June, uh, which is always great to hear about their experience there. And it's usually, it's very inspiring to hear them. September 17th will be Rally Day, and we are returning to the 1030 worship service on that date. From September, let's see, I believe it's the 18th. Elaine will be here on Monday through October the 8th. Reverend Elaine Gaetani will be our bridge minister. Um, for all those that you've who've met her, she's a lovely, lovely woman, and um, it's always great to have her here um, uh, to serve us. And then uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. John Wiegraf, who's also a member here of our church, will be doing service for us on October 15th. And then Reverend Cindy Worthington-Berry will meet with us 
uh, the week before October 22nd, but on October 27th, she will be celebrating our first service with her, and that is ONA Sunday. Um, I think that brings us now to the hymn sync. We will do three requests that we have been doing over the summer. If you could please raise your hands. So, <laughs> I see Miriam. Okay, Miriam, what would you like to choose? 595. I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, one of my favorites. Uh, we could do, let's see. Uh, can we do all three songs? Three verses?
10. And that is holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We do two. Take a deep breath and relax into the moment. Relax into the sacred now as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Since I'm not used to your order of worship, uh, I can also tell you I have the pages in the wrong order. <laughs> As we come to worship, we come to be enlightened. We come to understand the presence of God in all of our lives. As we light the Christ candle, we light the light that brings us peace and reconciliation, that brings love into our world. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to celebration. Drawn by God's presence. We gather. Inspired by God's spirit. We worship. Empowered by God's grace. We live. Opened by God's love. We share. Please rise and body your spirit for hymn number 404, Love Divine, All Love Excelling.
Join me in the opening prayer as we say together, may we be the agents of healing and reconciliation when opposed by the forces of destruction and alienation. May we be the beacons of beneficence when others are the harbingers of hatred. Call us to be your resurrection people, those who trust in kindness more than might, in forgiveness more than revenge, in gentleness more than harshness, and in virtue more than prudence. May beauty flow forth from our spirits, truth from our lips, and mercy from our hands. Help us to live the life that is light that we may, like Jesus, rise above the shadows of death and despair and shine forth the blessings of love on all of creation. May it be so. And please join in our call to confession. God is gracious and merciful and knows our needs even before they reach our lips. Still, we engage in confession admitting to God all that rests uneasily in our hearts. Confident of God's love, let us make our confession, first in silent prayer. And together we pray. Holy God, creator of all that is, donor of grace, and giver of life, hear our prayer. There are chasms in our lives, deep valleys that separate us from one another and from you. We confess that we have allowed those rifts to grow for fear of admitting our part in the separation, for fear of being rejected when we reach out. You called us to a reconciled life to healed relationships, to a wholeness with each other and with you. Mend us, we pray, and make us new creations, ready to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven, and thus free to love and serve. Alleluia. Amen. As we come to worship on the Sunday morning, we, yes, we light the candle, we share together with one another, we extend to one another the peace of Christ. There may be many ways that you're comfortable doing that. Some do it with a blessing. Some do it with a handshake. Some may do it with a hug. I would invite you to share the peace of Christ. Now. Please be with you. Please be with you. In our understanding of worship, we come not only to receive, but to also share. To give from the blessings that we know we have received, that have nurtured our lives, that help us to literally sustain life for ourselves. But we also want to share that sustenance with others. So we share in the offering of our gifts, 
not only with those that we might contribute in our dollars and cents, but also our time and energy. As the ushers receive our offering, may we give to the ministries of this church. Amen. Join me as we pray together. Oh dear one, may these scraps of paper and bits of metal serve as symbols of our deep desire for your love to transform our time, efforts, and substance into works of creative compassion for each other, and for the wider community, and for the world beyond through this church. So may it be. Amen. Our scripture today is the Christian scripture from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among you, them. Amen. I have to tell you that it's a surprise to be back here again, and yet it's a wonderful gift. Janine? Janine? By any chance, did you remove some papers that were up here? I might have. <laughs> I was afraid that might happen. Not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, while she's retrieving my sermon, uh, you all don't know the rest of the story. But nearly... Fifty years ago, our first child was born at Leonard Morris Hospital. So we're back in Natick. And our second child was also born at Leonard Morris. 
19 months later, but our third child, our third son, now lives in Natick. So that's the rest of the Van Arsdale legend. But anyway, we also lived in Arizona for 11 years. Have any of you ever spent more than two weeks in Arizona? Okay, one person. It's different than New England. Yeah? On a day like today, it might be 110. We know that reputation. But when I was there, I became good friends with a pastor at the Yar Yarnell Church. That's up in the high desert, as it's called. And one day, he sent me an email saying, you got to watch TV tonight. It's on a cable network. It's called Dirty Jobs. Have any of you ever watched that program? Yeah. Well, Yarnell's about 60 miles from where we lived, up in the high desert. Yarnell is where, several years later, 19 of the firefighters died in a forest fire that came over very quickly. But he was writing to me about Mike Rowe coming to Yarnell to record a program for Dirty Jobs. Now, Mike Rowe does all sorts of things that are dirty. Slopping pigs, removing bones from fish, hunting plagues of vermin, collecting highway roadkill, sloshing around cleaning sewers. But he came to Arizona to do something unique. He was visiting a couple that were members of that church, and their profession is to catch raise and sell venomous spiders, tarantulas, scorpions, and even a few poisonous snakes. So Mike Rowe has a curiosity about challenging jobs and the genuine aspects of those jobs where men and women do that work. And the show presents actually a powerful message about the dignity of that work and about the deep satisfaction that people who do that on a daily basis have doing a dirty job. Now, when we think about dirty jobs, we think about something quite different. But this is Labor Day weekend, so let's celebrate those who do those jobs that maybe none of us would choose to do. And then we go to the Gospel of Matthew, the given scripture for today, and Jesus was desiring peace amongst his followers. And that was a difficult and dirty job in a sense. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. And if the member listens to you, you have regained that one or as one translation says, you've regained a friend. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For whoever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This section in the Gospel of Matthew is literally about listening and respecting others in the new community that came to be known as the church. And being nice, as the scripture suggests, isn't always easy. The removal of sin or the correction of sin by someone else with the gift of forgiveness is not easy at all. And all God asks is that we turn to others and offer the same thing to them that God has offered to us. All of it happens when the church brings together a sense of honor and respect, even when we may disagree. And actually, as I walk around this building with all the construction that's going on, I'm sure there's several of you saying, we should never have done this. <laughs> Hold on. The decision is made, live with it. The good stuff is coming. Well, in the early years of the church, there were ob 
obviously issues of deep conflict. We all know that our faith, though, literally ends and begins with forgiveness and love. Our forgiveness of ourselves, our forgiveness of others, is the central core of the Christian faith. And we all know that when we express our love and forgiveness for others by being nice, it's not always easy. No. In the school of Christian discipleship, if you want to call it that, in the early years of the church, 2,000 years ago, the apostle Peter was always trying to assume his top position in his class. And from his teacher's point of view, there was no way that one could overemphasize the value of working together and being nice. Time and again, Jesus had emphasized the essential nature of the gospel is to love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy, and when someone strikes you on the cheek, Turn the other cheek. Yes, Jesus gave his early followers instructions. He gives those to us as well. Instructions about how we are to function in the Christian community and what we call the church. He tells us how to respond with someone in the church that offends us, offering a practical way to settle church disputes. Members of every church spend many hours together doing what sometimes seems like small, insignificant matters, like preparing communion early this morning. Yet, being nice isn't always easy in the process. Jesus then ends his teaching, even more astonishingly claiming, whatever we bind on earth may be bound with us in heaven. He promised that where two or three are gathered, then he is there also. The church is this all too human earthly institution, and yet it's been given extraordinary powers by God. Peter accepted that, and he followed Jesus, and he knew that it meant respect, honor, Forgiveness, and it had to take the place of the vengeance and the anger. And if another member of the church sins against you, how often should I forgive him? Seven times. And another times what? Seven times seventy. Being nice isn't always easy. Now I know those of you that are here on a holiday weekend have come to love this congregation. Yes, you're the faithful crew that gather on holidays. <laughs> this congregation is beginning a new adventure. You saw the dates and times coming. Your new pastor, Cindy, will be arriving. Well, I passed that date of ordination and installation many years ago. It's over 50 now. And you know what's changed in all those years? Everywhere I go, there's conflict and there's disagreement. When I go to a community event or when I read about things on the national scale, everything is about conflict. When's the last time you read something about reconciliation? No? In the past week, while many Americans are suffering from hurricane damage, we have all sorts of Congressional leaders suggesting, well, wait a minute. Before you spend that money, make sure you tell me where you're going to save it on the other end, what you're not going to spend money on. And you got to do that first before you help rescue fellow Americans. No, in our everyday world, being nice is not very easy. The Church of God is a creation of Christ convening us together. And yet the church is also for ordinary, 
women and men trying to get along in a human organization. And it's not always perfect. Your new pastor has been called by God to preach the word, to point people toward Christ's forgiveness for our lives. Yes, but she's also going to be a leader in your midst. Often called upon to be a manager or administrator of a very human institution. You call it First Church. Yes, it's a creation of God. Jesus actually says some wonderful things about the church, calling us salt of the world, light and darkness. We know those phrases. Jesus did not say, if your church is not really the true church with all its disagreements. No, he doesn't say that. There will be disagreements. There will be hurts. There will be wrongs committed in the church. And when that happens, you are to care enough for your sisters and brothers to act and respond in love. Yes, this is a word for this congregation and for all of us. And I pray that the squabbles you may have, may you may get on to the real genuine business of the church. Yes, because being nice isn't always easy, but it's still possible. Settling disputes in a Christ-like manner is really the business of the church. Jesus commands us to work for reconciliation, and much is at stake here, and nothing less than that will mean the survival of the body of Christ. Have you ever thought that when you spend time serving on a committee or giving yourself or maybe offering to usher on a Sunday morning, is more than just participating in this voluntary organization. Maybe your work here is part of the reign of God, the gifts of Christ's love in our world. The world out there looks at us, looks at the church community, looks at the United Church of Christ and this congregation as a model for what Christians are supposed to be. That's our responsibility. Three years ago, John Lewis, the civil rights leader and longtime congressman for Georgia, died. John Meacham has come out with a recent book about John Lewis, honoring him. And in there, he quotes Lewis speaking about the past civil rights movement and the present Black Lives Matter movement as being the spirit of history. America at its best, he calls it. I have long believed, quoting at that point, quoting John Lewis, I have long believed, I have long preached that the nation's moral compass comes from God. It is God. It is seen through God. And God so loved the world that he gave us the countless men and women who lost their homes, their jobs, for the right to vote. God gave us the children of freedom who lost their lives in the bombing in Birmingham and the three young men who were killed in Mississippi. Again, Lewis goes on, but of all, above all else, God gave us courage, the power to believe what I call the spirit of history. Behind us is stronger than the terror of hatred that is in front of us. That is what I believe, and I believe it now. Forgiveness comes. Forgiveness comes through love, with no strings. No strings that require us do anything more than be forgiving of others. Love, respect, and honor of all people in the life of the church, the community where all of you live, where I live, is the discipleship we are called to serve. Yes, and it is about being nice and honoring and respecting 
to every other human being that is not an act of the will, but rather a function of the love and the grace of God within us. Yes, forgiveness and love, honor and respect are all at the core of our Christian life. The Christian life for me, for you, for your family, for those in this church family, for life in our world. And being out there may not be easy, but it is what our Christian faith is all about. We come to celebrate that good news in all of life. Amen. we come to celebrate communion today, we come to share in the elements that have been prepared for us, and I'm to remind you that the white glasses are wine and the red glasses are grape juice, and the gluten-free crackers are in the center, but knowing it's Labor Day Sunday, you all know that routine. Let's join together. Whether there are 13 people gathered on one side of a long table, or 56 grouped around the tables in fellowship room, the invitation remains. We are called and welcome to satisfy our hunger. Whether there are 5,000 people on the hillside eating from their laps, or one on a couch in the living room eating from a tabby table, the invitation remains. We are called and welcome to satisfy our thirst. Whether there are 20 people bumping elbows in a dining room, or six squatting hip to hip around the squared table, invitation remains. We are called and welcome to satisfy our need for the bread. Whether we find ourselves at literal tables of various shapes, or at some of the many other ways we gather to eat, the invitation remains. We are called to welcome and satisfy our need in the cup. We are indeed, once again, to come to the feast at this table. And so we do. We remember the final gathering at the familiar table with Jesus and his friends. That night started out like many others before as they shared stories along with the bread and the cup, filling their spirits and bodies with a communal meal. But this night was different. Aware of the betrayal that would lead to his death, Jesus drew meaning from the meal being shared so that they and we would always remember even after he was gone. He took the basic bread, blessed it and broke it, and saying, this is my body shared with you every time you do this, remembering me. And after they had supped, Jesus blessed and poured the common cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you, and every time you will remember the forgiveness of sins for all. In this very hour, we remember Jesus invited everyone, table or not. In this very hour, we remember the church has bread, table or not. In this very hour, we remember all we need is to need the bread and the cup, table or not. Let us invite the Spirit to join us in our meal. Infuse each element, Holy One, so that we can encounter you wholly as one. When we eat and drink, give us the wisdom to celebrate and the courage to embody the diverse grains and droplets in the form of the sacred meal. Make us grateful for all we are about to receive and unite us in love now and always. Amen. Come and eat, table or not. All things have been made ready.
bread is given to you as the gift of life. Take and eat. We take the cup and share in the forgiveness of sins for all. Let us drink. Now may we pray together. Thank you, maker and breaker of tables, for inviting me and us all to partake in this sacred meal. Even as we have gotten our fill today, keep our hungers unsatisfied and our thirst unquenched, so that we might be and do the church, always in remembrance of you. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, there are special concerns printed there in your bulletin. And there may be other concerns that have been sent in by email. We join together, remembering those especially with cancer and those living with the challenges of mental health in their own lives. Let us pray together. Dear God, how does it happen in this poor old world that you are so great and yet so few find your presence? That you call so loud and people don't hear? That you are near and nobody feels you? That you give yourself to everybody and no one seems to know your name? We do our share of fleeing from you. We turn our backs and say we cannot see you. We close our ears and we cannot hear you. We pray this morning that you will help all of us to truly know your presence and to refocus our energies as we seek to be your faithful people. Help us to remember that we are Easter people, that we belong to the company of the redeemed, that you have acted to save us and to save our world. Help us to remember that because of Jesus the Christ, you count us worthy to come into your presence and to walk with you in all of life. We pray this morning that you will be with those in this church family, especially those who seek your healing presence, those who seek your support and comfort, those who search for meaning and purpose in life itself. Yes, help us all to be agents of Christ's gospel in the world. Help us to honor you in our decision making Help us to be faithful disciples that you know we are capable of becoming. And now may we ask these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our divine parent, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may we conclude our time together as we sing to him, Lord, make us servants of your peace, number 458.
may we go to the world in peace and be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, and strengthen the faint-hearted, and support the weak, heal the afflicted, honor and serve all people, love and serve the Lord rejoicing in the power of the Spirit, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be and abide with you and those whom we love this whole world over. Amen.